Modding has always been one of the most interesting developments to the video game industry since video games first became mainstream. It's gone from tacky, obscure devices that you clipped onto your game cartridges as if it were a leech, to an entirely different and unique experience thanks to the internet. The unparalleled creativity and work ethic of some people have created some of the most enjoyed mods of games, such as those of Halo and Half-Life, the latter of which turned into one of the most successful first-person shooters in the world, Counter-Strike. Modding simply is video game culture at its best, as entire communities have started to form around mods for any genre of game, and the game we all know here, Friday Night Funkin', is no exception to this rule. Although the base game was the original and really helped launch the game into stardom, FNF's continued popularity is largely attributed to its talented and creative modded community, and some mods have entire sub-communities forming around them, with teams the size of most indie game devs. But what happens when the community around a mod fractures and shatters completely? Well, we have our model answer. Versus Sonic.exe was one of the most successful FNF mods more than a year ago, coming out of nowhere and elevating itself to its status today with 1.4 million downloads. But now the community is in ruins, split between itself, people getting exposed every single day, sister projects being cancelled, and everyone wanting to leave. And to think this could all have been averted were it not for a well-timed allegation and a continuation of misconduct from the leading figureheads. So. Come with me on a journey to discover how some of today's biggest figureheads in the FNF Sonic.exe community falsely accused their director of pedophilia and continue to perpetuate their allegations whilst also making irresponsible decisions and statements to this day. Let's begin. Revy, the, the new owner of the Versus Sonic.exe 2.0 mod, has indeed been grooming minors on Discord. Two to be exact, one being 16 years old and the other person being 14 years old. Real quick, I'm gonna risk saying this because of what happened while V2 was happening. Uh -huh. Um, what do you guys think about the recently came up video of Revy being innocent? Bull, absolute uh, bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actual bullshit. I got no comment. Uh, I got no comment. Uh, no. I got no comment. <laughs> And then you go on Twitter, and you find out more and more shit surrounding the people you discussed in the first video. You eventually find out that they are incredibly scummy individuals with a lot of shit behind them, and yet they got off scot-free. What would you do? Well, I'm telling you what I'm doing, I'm making this video right here to expose the entire team behind the Versus Sonic.exe mod. When the Versus Sonic.exe mod was first released around August, most of the people working on the mod were relatively unknown, and their background is difficult to track. But our focus for now is on the director of the mod, Revy03, who is responsible for a number of key decisions in the mod, the most popular of them being the character itself, known as Faker. Revy's creation led to a decent amount of success, and the character became very well known. But then, everything came crumbling down. Our story starts on the 12th of January, 2022, 18 days after the Twitter storm on Amaralcha, when a metaphorical nuke was dropped on the FNF Sonic.exe community in the form of a Twitter thread. It starts as follows. Trigger warning, pedophilia, gaslighting. I've outed three creeps before, and I will not hesitate to do it again. Revy has been revealed to be an incredibly harmful person, responsible for grooming two minors and manipulating the community to conceal her image. This thread was posted by False Cow, an affiliate with many people on the mod, and someone who is backed by said accusers. We'll have a look at some of the accusers much later, but for now this thread on Revy03 is the main basis for the allegations that were put forward, claiming that Revy groomed and preyed on a 14 year old and a 16 year old, and in both situations, Revy was 18. Let's begin with the 16 year old, known as Kubi. Kubi's allegations stated that Revy, an 18 year old, groomed them via erotic roleplay whilst they were 16. So let's have a look into Kubi and Revy's documented interactions. The first and third screenshots are not really anything, it's just a conversation where nothing huge happens. Revy says her brain is acting like a meme and Kubi is just kind of egging on for the conversation. Nothing notable here is really said. But the second screenshot is arguably the most explicit, where Revy finally starts his erotic roleplay we've been waiting for, and then Kubi says they're tired and wants to go to bed. And what does the monstrous Revy do? Do they pressure them to keep going? No, she just says sure, it's fine, good night. Like, she doesn't even ask to do it tomorrow or anything, she just leaves it there. Yeah, no, I'm not joking around, this is all we are given for an allegation of grooming. So let's quickly go through the checklist. 
Is this illegal? Well, contrary to popular opinion, this actually is within legal boundaries. I was puzzled to find how many people online said this was breaking the law, and then having no source at all, having their source being a law that doesn't apply in this situation. So guys, do your research. So Revy and Kubi both live in different states in the US. That means that in this case, we don't go by state laws, but instead by federal law and the US code. And to answer the ultimate question, I was originally going to write something in the script, but I realised that this comment on a law forum puts it more perfectly than I ever could. Is it legal in the US for an 18 year old to talk dirty with a 17 year old, but not necessarily send or receive nude pictures? For example, I just want you on top of me. The only law for adults and minors is that a minor cannot give consent to an adult. So sexual activity from an adult with a minor is illegal, right? But sexual activity, does that only refer to the touching or inserting of parts? Or does it include verbal as well? Just talking about sex isn't going to get you prosecuted for any crime. Actually engaging in any kind of sexual activity with a minor, or taking, receiving, possessing, or distributing any nude or otherwise sexually suggested pictures of the minor are things that can get you prosecuted. I mean, that says it all really. That kind of just perfectly sums up everything. Next. Is this grooming? Well, that's hard to answer. Considering the amount of DMs that we don't get to see here, it's difficult to determine the dynamic and who had control over who. From the three screenshots we've already seen, the first two don't really add anything, but the third one shows that Revy was actually respectful of Kubi's wishes. Another separate screenshot that Revy sent to Falsecar on the Twitter thread also backs this up, with Revy being the hesitant one on whether to engage in this ERP and Kubi egging it on. So, from what I can see, Revy doesn't use her influence and power to force Kubi into doing anything. It seems as if they are on equal footing here. Showing evidence of something like Revy chasing down Kubi to give them an apology would also be great if the context wasn't removed and they were already neutrally talking before Kubi accidentally sent a screenshot of the DM and Revy started panicking. Finally, is it immoral? Well, that comes solely down to you. If an 18 year old has an ERP with a 16 year old, do they deserve to get hounded as a groomer, a predator, or a pedophile? Personally, I don't think so. This isn't a question of how weird it is, and this video isn't to try and force down your throat that it isn't weird, but there is a massive line between weird and pedophile groomer predator, and crossing that line and contributing to the spread of mis false information is a huge step too far. So in the case of Kubi, I find Revy innocent. Now the accusations don't get any stronger with a 14 year old, and the main reason here is because of the content and the evidence. Given the more agreeably immoral age gap, you'd think this would be the real bear trap that we've been waiting for, and on the surface, that's what it seems. You have this entire Imga link published with sprawling logs of conversations between Revy and this 14 year old known as Dreamy, but there's a catch. First of all, taking an actual look through the DMs reveals something very interesting. Revy didn't know Dreamy's age. As seen here in the Imga link, Revy is only given Dreamy's age after five months of sporadically talking. Now, you might think this is unlikely, but there are two huge factors that actually contribute to Revy's side of the story. First of all, as seen here, these are some long gaps between messages, days or weeks. It's important to remember that this conversation started off a discussion about commissions, a business transaction basically, and the gaps between messages are a huge supporting factor. Secondly, as mentioned here, Dreamy only told Revy the age in a public Discord server conversation. Now, I don't think I would be able to retain information from a Discord server conversation off the top of my head. I think that is an unlikely expectation. Obviously a word has to be put in about Revy making some risque comments to someone she doesn't even know the age of, but I think that is more irresponsibility than an accusation of grooming. And secondly, this is huge, but Revy and Dreamy never actually send any sexual media anywhere in this conversation. That's right, no nudes, no no erotic roleplay, they're not even in a romantic relationship here at all, which would be immediately condemnable. It's literally just pages of some inappropriate jokes between each other. For God's sake, there wasn't even like a power imbalance or anything here. Revy hadn't blown up as a modder here, and when she crossed the line and Dreamy felt uncomfortable, Dreamy called her out on her bullshit. Again, this is not to argue the weirdness of whatever, because, you know, obviously it's not a good position for Revy, and it's incredibly irresponsible. But when you're trying to call this grooming by stretching the definition to, good heavens, Revy wanted to kiss a Sona they made, there is literally no point. This is more about accuracy of allegations. And so, without sufficient proof of grooming by definition in this case, you cannot call this grooming or predatory. You just have to leave it as it is. And that's about it for the allegations. Along with a number of smaller allegations that have since been disproven, this has been the precedent that most of the FNF Sonata.exe community used to label Revio 3 as a predator. 
Now, before I move on, let me make something clear here. Revy is far from perfect. Some of the stuff I didn't actually address here is something that she can be criticised for, stuff like blatant lying to cover up the situation, and of course the weirdness of those two situations, but that's more of a uh, personal perspective. But the main purpose of this segment is to clear allegations. There is a huge difference between calling someone weird and calling someone a groomer, and Revy didn't deserve half of what she got. Banished from the community, getting your name censored and your creations blacklisted forever for lying would be crazy if it happened to anyone else. But this is the versus Sonic.exe community, where the accusers control the narrative and stand by these accusations to this day. So, who exactly were the big players in the Revy situation? Who helped in bringing down her online presence? Well, you'd originally think it was the victims, Kubi and Dreamy, but I actually don't think they had as big of an involvement. Perhaps Kubi more, but it's difficult to blame a young person for a false allegation because it's hard for them to really differentiate. No, instead we're going to look at the most popular members of the original FNF Sonic.exe team, those responsible adults who saw these allegations and went, oh my god, this is real, and then spent the next few months pouring these allegations down the community's throat like molten gold. For example, Comgaming and Avery Avery, two people who admitted in private that the evidence against Revy wasn't really evidence. I'm a wee bit confused, are you implying that the pedophilia Revy was accused of is exaggerated to an extent? It was blown heavily out of proportion at first until the dust settled. Ah, unable to control themselves to that extent and etc. Yeah, I still do not like her and she's still weird, but again, the evidence isn't really evidence. I have my own reason to be against Revy, which is that weird shit, but the evidence that we have doesn't really work in the long run. Com was also someone who accused Ravi of making him uncomfortable without any proof whatsoever. And as for Avery, uh, I've just been given a list here, so uh, read all that. Oh man, what the hell? Well, you know, all those things are incredibly bad, but you know, in my opinion, I don't think you should mess with Avery, guys, because uh, as seen from this amazing message, good, otherwise I'll find you. Jasper knows this firsthand. In theory, I could fuck up a lot of people's lies, but I don't, because... <laughs> Or we could talk about Master Bro, one of the directors of the mod, who just completely backpedaled when Larger Lenny made his video, saying, The whole doc with the accusations against Revy was put together a little poorly, I'll admit, but I never had a part in it. There is proof to show that Revy is just a terrible person in general. Okay, does that excuse false allegations? I mean, even if Revy is a horrible manipulative liar that should be made out to be in this situation, you are still becoming the face of an unhealthy precedent, Master Bro. You cannot just say that and then continue to passively perpetuate allegations that someone is a pedophile if they're not. Not only does it make you look worse when people look into it, but it also sets a precedent that now pedophilia allegations are weapons so we can stop all the bad people in the world. Good one, buddy. Jesus, just say the exaggerated situation heavily, I blindly believe allegations, etc, 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 I'm sorry. I mean, you can't be worse than Uptorn, I mean, that <laughs> that guy literally, one of the EXE composers, insulted me on Twitter, then he got found out that he was accused of sexually harassing 15 to 16 year olds, and no one picked up on that. Uptorn, no, 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 you can't just leave the community and expect me not to look at these screenshots. I hope to never see any of you ever again, because for fuck's sake, this is... And finally, we've got to talk about Rightburst, former owner of the Versus Sonic.exe mod, who is probably the biggest history of idiocy out of everyone in the team. However, what's also important to keep in mind is that most of the team is over 18, whilst Rightburst is only 16, so it's kind of difficult to criticise someone's flaws even though they're 16 and can kind of make dumb decisions because of their age, especially with massive situations like this. Sorry, editors know, this also includes com gaming, I forgot to mention that. Uh, sorry. Anyway, continue. But regardless, some criticism is warranted, such as the irresponsibility and misuse of a Twitter platform of over 25,000 followers. This includes attacking people who decide to support Revy subtly through the use of retweeting your friends. Although this can go horribly wrong, such as when Rightburst and Avery accidentally attacked someone who wasn't even supporting Revy, and the subsequent harassment made them delete their account. Ooh, that's, that's not too good, that's not too good. Rightburst also implied in a now deleted tweet that they wanted something to happen to my channel, whether that be deplatforming or cancelling, who knows. To be fair, he has publicly apologised for this, although not in private to me. 
other right bush shenanigans, including an unfortunately placed reply to a quote tweet of a ooh, or this masterpiece of a document that flips a normal conversation into a gaslighting opera, or this claim of memory loss, despite being a professional mod director, which is a task that requires multitasking, or this amazing response to the gathering of evidence. Real quick, I'm gonna risk saying this because of what happened while V2 was happening. Uh -huh. Um. What do you guys think about the recently came up video of Revy being innocent? Bull, absolute uh, bullshit. Absolute yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Actual bullshit. I got no comment. Oh. I got no comment. No. I got no comment. <laughs> Listen, I could probably develop those points a lot more and collapse like a ton of bricks on Brightburst. A lot of people already have them, and I'm going to give him slightly less because I think he has taken the brunt of the force here. Still, I believe he isn't above criticism, and these are some serious points against his career for one of the biggest advocates against Revy. And that's about everyone major, I think, with the exception of Falscar, who made this really long document about how Revy bad, everyone else bad. But I'm going to leave that for another time because it's just too long. But that's it. Those are some of the actions of the accusers that have been the biggest backers of the Revy allegations. Now, you might be sitting there thinking that, nah, yeah, people make mistakes, they seem alright, isn't really that bad. But there's another person and another situation we've missed out on, a glaring issue here. And it might just be the biggest example of double standards in the FNF Sonic.exe community that has ever been seen. Now, the entire community treated Revy very harshly for being kind of strange in DMs with a 14 year old and having ERP with a 16 year old was 18. And when I say harshly, I mean doxing and harassment to her, anyone who defends her, and anyone who even appreciates her work. So, what happens when one of the EXE team and a well known community member? do something bad. Something on that level. How do our FNF pedophile catching task force react? What do they do? And to what extent do they continue to associate with them? This is Jester Frog, also known as Roxy or Bunny Tables, a well-known member of the FNF Sonic.exe community who worked on a number of sister projects for the mod, and a close friend to the original accusers of Revy. In the middle of 2022, Jester Frog was exposed for their abusive relationship with another individual, with a two-year difference. Jester Frog was 17 and this individual was 15. Now, there was originally a cut of this segment where I read out all the Jester Frog DMs, but A, that's pain to read, B, I don't want to put you through that pain, and See, since I've not read out Revy's DMs of Dreamy, I may as well not do the same with Jester Frog. But here's what you need to know. Jester Frog and this unnamed individual were in an abusive, exploitative relationship that was on and off over two years. As evidence from these DMs, Jester Frog continually requested explicit pictures from them, and obviously did what you do with those kind of stuff, and only really cared about their partner for that, even when they were ill from a COVID booster. This individual had not been in a significant relationship before, and was forced to reluctantly show themselves due to Jester Frog's constant pestering and pleading, which went on for ages. And eventually when they wanted to stop, Jester asked for one last video for closure, or whatever that means. So yeah, that, that is bad. Like. I, I don't need to tell you that, but that is bad. Now, I looked this up and it isn't actually illegal, there's nothing in the federal law that says anything about two minors sexting, but regardless of that, Jester Frog is still being a complete piece of like human garbage here. I'd argue that even if Jester Frog's 16, 17, this is still an abusive and exploitative relationship that went on and off for around two years. Like, within that amount of time, you probably should have clocked what you were doing. So how will our FNF, Sonic.exe, Pedophile, Takedown Task Force deal with this, considering the fact that they already established a precedent of how they treat people like this? Oh, wait, you're, you're saying some of them continue to talk to Jester Frog online? Yes, Jester Frog was publicly denounced, but behind the scenes the two were gladly able to talk about reforming them for the better and making them into a great person, and also to cope. And you have to ask, why? Well, let's have a look at this DM from False Cow that kind of explains it. How are they going to try to negate Revy for that shit while still just trying to argue the age gap thing to uh, make yours seem worse? Both situations were fucking awful, but you owned up to that shit in respect to the person you affected. The dick eating is crazy. Oh, right, yeah, because if you own up to a situation, you're automatically bet, no matter how flimsy the allegations are, you have to own up to everything. Every allegation made against you, own up to it. I'm, I, you're, you're guilty of everything. Imagine if that logic worked for like anything ever, like false guy welcoming someone into their home because they murdered seven people, but it's okay because they admitted to it. Obviously that's an exaggeration, but you get my point. Everyone has the right to deny, you should treat them all the same, regardless of that. And in a shocking twist, Com Gaming actually went ahead and warned Avery Avery not to interact with Jester back in May. I'm gonna tell you once and for all, fucking block Revy and block Jester. Jester I won't block, I have my reasoning for that because I talked to her and unlike Revy, she I know wants to make that change unlike how I am. 
No. You thought Ravi would change and look what happened. Everything is fucked. I don't want that to happen again because the next time it happens, you can't come back if it shows you haven't learned. Fucking, I'll see then, but I don't know, really, right now I'll take my time up here from the public. What do you mean? Like talking to them and others vouching that she's trying to improve. It's not just me who sees this. I wouldn't for a second give a vouch unless others seen it too besides myself. I will not lie for a fact on that. I can give you a lot of names for this and you can ask them too. Dude, unless a doc comes out saying otherwise with hard evidence, there's nothing I can say. I learned from the Revy situation. Understand, I'm just giving what I know from seeing the fallout from the Jester stuff. Mm hmm. But I'll take this entire ordeal as a hard lesson and wake up call because I do want improvement. I don't want to fall hard here. Good man. Conversations have leaked since that show Avery interacting with Jester Frog in August. Ah, oh, bravery. I can't. I just can't remember. What was that thing about you ruining lives? I wonder if I can try and see. Ah, oh, it's. It's not coming to my mind. Never mind. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll I'll uh, I'll talk about it another time. Oh, there's also proof that others knew about this in the team that didn't really do anything about it. I mean, you think for a person like Jester Frog with that amount of actions, you'd really like you wouldn't really like want to you you know you'd call someone out like Com Gaming did, but like, no. No, look, for example, right burst. Another thing I want to mention. Yes, he was all talking about Jester too, though I was already handling the issue with Avery having them in illegal instruction. I had no contact with Jester. No contact with Jester? That's funny, because I have this DM saying you only rarely talk to them. Bit of a difference between a definitive statement saying no, and then another statement being more vague and saying, oh, maybe I did talk to them a few times. Now you can see the obvious issue here. Corruption, nepotism, favoritism, and the FNFSwine.exe community. You gotta admit to stuff we accuse you of, otherwise we won't like you. The fact that some of the biggest people in the community are selectively deciding who goes and who stays, regardless of how severe their actions were. Let me make it clear. We are not comparing situations here. You are comparing reactions. How can you publicly drag someone through the mud and out the window, yet make the healing approach to the other? Because one of them accepted the public backlash that they were a pedophile, and the other questioned the allegations against them because what well, people can't question allegations against them now the sheer inconsistency of these accusers is astounding and i hope that these previous segments have finally managed to get my message across that the allegations against revy were exaggerated and that the accusers should not be trusted with anything these are adults who have acted with complete and utter incompetency i mean how do you fail the basic understanding of believable victims yes that is a good mindset it's one i completely back but it doesn't mean believe all accusations the writing on the wall is as clear as ever. This is proof of an incredibly blatant double standard, and it supports the ultimate theory of blacklisting and censorship in the community. In conclusion, with the evidence provided, Revio 3 is not a predator, groomer, or a pedophile. The explicit conversation with Kubi was entirely within legal boundaries, and the conduct of Revy was nowhere near as manipulative or controlling as some have portrayed it. And the conversation with Dreamy, albeit containing topics and messages that have not been suitable for someone like them, only contain insufficient evidence that cannot be used to solidly call someone a predator without further development. Whilst not a morally positive beacon, the facts remain the same. Revy was falsely accused and didn't deserve half of what she got. The conduct of this community in the last year has been appalling. Several members and their friends have been harassed and doxxed, forced offline over different stances on this issue. Revy herself got sent some abhorrent stuff that I can't even say or show on this platform, and I was swarmed by a Twitter mob for having a different stance with proof to back it up, and in turn people exaggerated claims about myself. And the main figures of this community are the most responsible for this, because the Revy allegation has set a precedent of exaggeration. Although I'm not going to hold them responsible for everything, their decisions during the situation have been incredibly misguided, from the different ways they've treated people who did considerably worse, to the numerous times they've lied to their audiences. And that's where we are now, as these people get devoured by the same community standards they set almost a year ago. What goes around, comes around. The facts are simple here. The FNF community cannot continue living a life standing by idly, whilst false and overemphasized information continues to fester in the online ethos. But I would like to leave you with some hope for once. Everything falls, everything does eventually, but people with different views, learning lessons from past destruction, can rebuild them again in a better vision. And if you would like to, then take in these lessons and let's not take in to believe everything at face value from both accusers and defendants. These are volatile situations that are to be treated with care and responsibility. Until next time, stay toasty.